Hello, everybody. Greetings in the name of Jesus. I want to welcome all of you to our Wednesday Bible study online. I want to greet all of our family and friends at Midway Samhain Assembly of God. Thank you for tuning in and making yourselves available for our online Bible study today. I want to especially greet all of you who are uh, tuning in for the first time. We want to say hello and greet you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for joining us in our weekly Bible study as a Bible-based church. We strongly believe that every believer should be firmly rooted in the Word of God. So thank you for making the time and joining us this week. I'm going to start us off in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that you will bless us in our time today as we get ready to study your word. Holy Spirit, we invite you to lead us into all truths. Open up our hearts, open up our minds, open up our ears, God. We pray against any distraction for the next hour, God. And I just pray that you'll help us to tune in and to be alert of what it is that you want us to learn today, God. So bless us in our time together. We give you all the glory and honor for this day. We ask all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, we want to greet you if you're just tuning in. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to our Bible study online. But without further ado, we're going to go ahead and start our Bible study today. If you have your Bibles with you, Genesis 1, verses 26 through 31, that's where we're going to be reading today. Uh, that's where we're going to get our message for today. Genesis 1, verses 26 through 31. Genesis 1, verses 26 through 31. Genesis <laughs> Satatu <laughs> Onolona ia fa mawalunga wa fa mawalunga ina lona loto lela wa lafwa imaile langi ya leti apolo ya sawa te alangi te alalangi ke alalo ifo lalangi ya lusa wa iseoli ale me ala ale wa fe alwa wa ya inelti apolo lalangi ele o moile fili a wa fe alwa wa ifa pe ile langi le fa mai pe te e fa atusa pe o se leona tangi tangi o su ese tanga te fi mna o aina ya te ya me le tam fa ile apostolo pe te fa matala ele o moile fili o o tama faila we fa se se ya itato e mai se la vata to le wo fa to tu e le tu o paula o me e sa wel fili o le fasioti o le ngoi ya mal fa o metia ai se ala le pentam fa tu stemio so 
Apolo, Woleto e Avan Woleto Yase Avanual T Apolo, Ma Angelu Uma Iote Moni Yale Muli Muli T Apolo, E Woleto Yase Nato Avanoa, Ilia Lofa Tu Nole Tua, Ole Fam Si Nonga Ale Ale Tua Nalafo Esse Maile Langi, Lela Wadwa Tua Ine Lalo Seoli, Yole Ole Fam Si Nonga Nole Tua, Ele Aila Se Suinga, Wa Tassil Fam Si Nonga Le Tua, Wa Umal Fam Si Nonga Le Tua, O Seoli Ale Fai Unga, Asa Tani Mate Moni Uma, Mela Leo Lo Fai Alwa Wa Ile Tami Nele Ti Apolo le tamu fai su e nei se e fa se se pe un tamu fai atu o le tamu mao le pepelo o o le na te fa se i na i ta tau a le la fai alwa wa i e tamu fai fa se ta tau a wa la wa lo i ta tau wa i o lo ava no i pe le le lo fa tu no le tu we still have opportunity to God's grace but for the devil himself he no longer has an opportunity grace will let to i i se ava no o ti apolo ma te moni uma i le lo fa tu no le tu o la tau wa fai uma Uh, and so that's why as Christians we have to be alert as we try to explain in the last couple of Sundays uh, or sorry Wednesdays um, that you know uh, that evil has a source that all of the wickedness and all of sin and all of evil that is prevalent in the world today it has a source and the source is Satan the devil and we know as we've been trying to explain the last couple of Wednesdays that you know before he became Satan he was actually a good angel in fact the Bible says that he was a anointed cherub an anointed cherub is a is an angel that's a little bit higher than the rest of the angels they were given specific tasks for example other cherubs could be like Gabriel and Michael they were higher angels archangels and here we have uh, uh, you know the devil who was once an anointed cherub and so of course we know the story that you know uh, because of his pride uh, he wanted to be higher than God God uh, executed judgment on him and the judgment is final and he was cast out of heaven and he is now here on earth and he's roaming around Peter says he's roaming around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour and that is an illustration of of someone who is not asleep a, 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 an enemy who is working 24 7 trying to deceive us trying to steal steal or kill and destroy and so uh, if the devil is moving around like that it's very important for us as believers uh, of Jesus Christ that we are to be alert and aware that we are always to understand what it is that we believe in and to stand firm in our faith and so anyhow we've been talking about how the devil is the source of all evil and now today we're gonna shift uh, we're gonna start talking about the the creation the beginning in the beginning when God created heaven and earth and when he made Adam and Eve we're gonna see that when God made everything in the beginning everything was good everything was perfect even when he made Adam and Eve they you know they were made perfect in the image and the likeness of God but of course we know the story because of sin and disobedience that's what marred uh, the creation of God that's what has affected the creation of God but before we jump into that we're gonna end on that part but we're gonna look at the initial uh, uh, creation of God in the beginning before the fall of man we're gonna look at the purpose that God made all things and that when he made all things he made it good and perfect so that's what we're gonna be looking at Pole pungai o o a mi o le anga uma me le anga uma a le ala la tato tano no le aso ne o le tato o e mata mata i le tala le le amatanga i no o faia le tua le langi malala langi le ala tato vava a e te mi mo mu a na faia le tua me uma sa a to to a malalei ma to a le 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 se me le anga le se me o tato i lo le tala i no o anga sala le o itanga ta i o le ala o a faia i na uma tato le anga sala a o le amatanga i a le anga sala le o itanga ta sa le le me uma sa ato tua me uma na yai fu le mafu anga na faya ile tua ya atama eva fa pe fu oi ma ya ole la la tato tal tal noi ma vava ayai e ta ua tele tato ile fina ngalo le tua so if you have your bibles genesis 1 26 to 31 i'm going to read it in a new king james version genesis mo mua luos fu maleono fa se ol fa u peto lu su matasi ale la u fa ita watu then god said let us make man in our image according to our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth so god created man in his own image in the image of god he created him male and female he created them then god blessed them and god said to them be fruitful and multiply fill the earth and subdue it have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth and God said see 
I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. To you it shall be for food. Also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food. And it was so. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now, if I tell you, I'll tell you, I'll on a feta la yane lea o lea tua, i nā tātou whaia i o le tangata i lo tātou whatusa, i a fō linga i a i tātou, i a pule fō i lā tō i i a i le sami, ma manu whelelei, ma manu whaiwha, ma, ma le lau ele ele uma, a tōa ma mea whetō lofi uma e whetō lofi le ele ele. On a whaia lea lea tua le tangata i lo na whatusa, o le whatusa o lea tua, na i a whaia i o i a. Na faia e ia o i la ua, o le tane ma le fafine. Ua fa manu ia fo i le atua i a te i la ua. Ma ua feta la i a tu le atua i a te i la ua. I a fana fanau ia, ma i a ulu ola, ma i a tungu ai le lalo lani. I a fa ato i lalo i ai, ma i a pule i i a i le sami, ma manu felelei, a atoa ma mea ola uma e feto lofi le ele ele. Ua feta la i a tu fo i le atua, fa auta, Ua ufoa i atu i ate o lua o la a wafu uma e tutupu ma o la to ufua o i le whonga ele ele uma lava. A toa ma la au uma ua i a i le fua o le la au e tutupu ma o na fatu e i ate o lua i a e whai ma mea e ai. O manu vai e whaa uma fo i o le vao ma manu felelei uma. A toa ma mea fe tolofi uma i le ele ele o i a i le ola ua ufoa i atu O ai o la aua, afu uma la ua la ola, e whai ma mea e ai, i le ua whaapea lava. Ua sila sila atu le atua i mea uma ua na whaia, fa auta foi, ua matua le lei lava. O le afiafi ma le tae ao, o le aso ono le ao. Ia whamanuia mai le atua le whaita wino lo na fionga pa ia le nei tula le aso. God bless you in the reading of God's word. So as we're talking about, we're shifting our talks now. and We're looking at the original creation story, God's original intention. That when he created us, he created us in his image according to his likeness. O le alo a tato uvava ai ma tato mata mata i le amatanga le ana faia i le atua le langi ma la langi. Le ana faia i le atua le ulua i tangata. Le afa meo le tangata ua faia i le atua i lona fatusa e fo linga fo i i ate ia. And the thing that we want to really drive today is for us to understand that in the beginning, when God made everything, everything was good. Everything was perfect. Ile amatanga ie unua faia ile atua mea uma, sa matuale lei mea uma, na ato atua fo i mea uma i luma ole atua. E ofo i la ia a tamma eva le ulua i tangata le na faia ile atua, na ato atua fo i la oe luma ole atua. Aule mea le tamma faia atu fo i nei aso, ia fai loa atu ia ati oe le nei aso, e ta aua oe mau i le finangalo ole atua. Langa e whaapi tua lava pe ese lava le whainga o le atua o le tangata so i fua ma mea uma na whaia i le atua. We need to understand that we are uniquely created by God with purpose. In other words, we are unique amongst everything that God created from the trees to the grass to the waters to the animals. We are uniquely designed. We were created according to his image and according to his likeness. And so we're going to look at that today to understand that our relationship with God in the beginning was good. It was perfect. Everything was good before the fall of man. And so we're going to kind of backtrack here. I know that many of us know the story, but I want to show us how unique we are in the creation story. Now, 
ilo le tua e ala mai le ile ile amatanga le la la tato vava ai ye u tato ilo le tala le fa mai le le fa upo mo mo na faya ile tua le langi male la lo langi a toa a ile amatanga le la fa mai lo fa upo lo fa mai sa so ona nu numi le la lo langi ma ua ngao ngao fa mai sa o fitia fo ile moana ile poli uli e tau mai e i na nu numi ua ngao ngao sa poli uli le amatanga ai fa fai le tua ya o ia le we know that when God made everything, even though, you know, in the beginning it was formless, empty, and dark, we know that God, out of that, is going to create the beautiful creation that we have today, and also you and me in His image. So when we look at this story, I want us to point one thing. You will notice, verse 3, immediately that verse starts with this, And God said, and God said, and you're going to see this throughout all of creation. You're going to see this verb or this uh, this little statement every time God moved to create something. Uh, every day that God moved to create something, it would always say, and God said. And God said, let there be light. And then there was light. In other words, again, here God is speaking. Let there be light. Let there be a firmament in the midst of waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Again, he says what? Let the waters be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. So again, time and time, you're going to see that let there be. God is speaking. God is saying. God is speaking all of creation into existence. Let the earth bring forth grass. So even when God created all of the living creatures, all of the birds in the air, every creature that's found on the land, God was still speaking it. Let the earth bring forth the living creature according to to its kind. But then when you get to our verses 26 and 27, it shifts. Instead of saying, let there be, listen to what verse 26 says, let us make man. The shift here, everything else God spoke. Here, God says, let us make man. When you say, let us make man, that's an indication of an action on God's part. In other words, he wasn't speaking man into existence. He says, let us make. To make means to work. God had to work to make us. Everything else, he just stood and spoke into existence. But for you and I, we're unique in God's creation. Because for us, it says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. On a So it tells us here, let us make, that there's an action that God actually had to work 
to create the first human being. And so when we look at this, I'm hoping to highlight, the reason why I'm repeating that is to show you that we are separate from all creation. We are not the same as animals. We are not the same as trees. We are not the same as the water and the sky and the stars and the sun and the moon and everything else. We are created, specially created, uniquely created by God. Because here, instead of speaking us into existence, because he could have. Let's just be real. If God wanted to make man by speaking, he could do it. He could just say, let there be man and there would be man. But the reason why we read this part of the story, I believe, is because God wants to show how special you are in his will and his purposes. I let out of a ye, a finna no way let tour. A femea, femea inata to fire, or ye sing a yoing, or ye sing al winger, wung a lua in a let tour, ille finger fat pitole tangata, a tau maye, a tau tele oema, or finna no let tour, a you know, God is working. I want you to, you know, notice that because uh, another, you know, side thing that I want to bring up here is notice that term again, let us make men. God isn't, that us means what? More than one. It's a plural word, meaning that what? Here is another idea of the Trinity of God. As we've been trying to explain, I know we've already talked about it, but every time we go, I want to still bring you back little things that will tie back to all of our teaching periods. But remember, we talked about God being uh, the Trinity, right? God, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And here we look at it, it says, let us make men. He's speaking with the Trinity. He's speaking with Jesus. He's speaking with the Holy Spirit. Again, proving that Jesus was in the beginning because we talked about the deity of Jesus Christ. But here in this line, let us make man. God is conferring with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he's saying, let us make man in our own image after our own likeness. And then it says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, God had created him. Or in the image of God, he created him. And then notice it says, male and female, he created him. So, male and female, he created him. So, male and female, I so in other words, uh, you know, again, driving home, we are significant before God. We are important in the we are important in the will of God. So when we look at this again, the drive here is that God made us in his image. And so we're going to be looking at three different things in the creation story that's going to help us understand our uniqueness. You know, in the beginning, again, keep this in mind. When we explain this, we're talking about before the fall of man. We're going to get to that part where, of the original sin. But again, we want to drive the story back from the beginning, lead it up so we get to that part where most of us know. But again, we want to understand why did God make everything in the beginning? There was a purpose. And when God made everything in the beginning, everything was good. So the first thing that I want to talk about today is humanity is God's unique creation. You are unique. You are special in God's sight. You know, the crown of God's handiwork is human life. The narrative marks the prominence or the importance of this creative uh, act in several ways. As I've tried to highlight, in the beginning, God made all of these things. And on the very last day and the very last thing that he created is human beings. And when he made the human beings, the fact that he didn't speak it into existence, but he actually worked to make him, that once again speaks of our significance in the sight of God. Out of all things, God made us. 
and did not speak into existence. Next thing you know, the Bible says two clear words. Human life alone is created in the image of God. It's clear that we were made in the image of God. Animals were not made in the image of God. Trees were not made in the image of God. The ocean were not made in the image of God. But you and I, we were made in the image of God according to the likeness of God. So when we look at this, again, this points to how unique we are in creation, that God has made us unique out of all things that were made. Human beings have this special uh, uh, thing about them that when God made them, he made them according to his image and according to his will. And let's look at that. Genesis 2 verse 7, it gives us a closer look. It says, and the Lord God formed the man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. Did you see that? And the Lord God formed. Again, that word means that he had to work. You know, it's clear that if God is going to form something out of dust, he's not speaking anything, but he's forming man out of the dust. And then he says what? He has breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and it became a living being. He didn't do this with animals. He didn't do this with, you know, any other uh, um, thing that he made. Only us human beings, only the first human being that God formed them out of the dust, that he breathed into his nostrils, the breath of life, making him uh, a living being and uh, making him very unique in the sight of God. Uh, we have the very breath of God you know, uh, in us. And that's what has given us the life that we have. And again, this distinguishes us amongst all of creation. God has given human beings, uh, not only that, God has also given human beings the special task of ruling over the created order. We need to look at that. You know, they get concerned because here it says God bless them to be fruitful and multiply. We know what be fruitful and multiply is because when God created man and woman, it was for that one purpose as well is to be fruitful and and multiply. And so some of us, you know, we get a little bit, uh, you know, angry at people giving birth and, you know, uh, to many children. And then we think, you know, I've heard uh, some people say that, oh, you know, it, the world might become overpopulated. Can I just say that if God his initial blessing for Adam and Eve was to be fruitful and multiply, then we have nothing to worry about the earth being overpopulated because God knows what he's doing. Otherwise, God wouldn't say in the very beginning to Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply. So, you know, uh, it's fill the earth, it says. I mean, th those are very clear. And then here, subdue it, have dominion over the fish. So in other words, God has given them this authority, once again, making us unique in the sight of God. Not only were we created in his image, created in his likeness, he has also given us the authority to rule and have dominion over what? 
over all of creation, over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that comes on the earth. Now, don't get me wrong. Having dominion doesn't mean abusing it, right? It means doing what we can to care for everything. It means being good stewards of everything. So yes, God has given us that authority, but we are to be good stewards of all of God's creation because at the end of the day, we're only taking care of what God made, right? God made us to take care of the things that he has made. Everything was made. And that's why here, this is God's authority. This is God in his own uh, order of creation. This is what he has you know, um, laid out as a foundation and as a plan. And right at the outset, in the beginning, God makes male and female. And then God says, you will have dominion over the earth, over the fish and the sea and every created thing. Not only that, you are to be fruitful and multiply. You know, and as we, again, as we're looking at this, because I, I wanted to be clear too as well, while we're passing over, you know, some of these verses, and I feel like we need to make sure that we understand this. You know, it's very clear at the outset that God made male and female, and that he created them both, that it's intentional, that we need to understand that God doesn't make mistakes, that there's no confusion of, a, uh, of, of the sexual orientation here, that God was clear that he made female, uh, that he made male and female. And how much more clear is this? This because then the next line says that what you ought to be fruitful and multiply you know and I, I know that everyone will have the correct logic and understanding that it takes a male and a female to be able to what to be fruitful and multiply and so again you know the reason why I'm highlighting this is because again we want to make sure that we cover all of these tracks as we go that in the beginning this is when everything was perfect because remember, all of these other thoughts of, of confusion, of the sexual orientation, it came after what? After the fall of man. But in the beginning, when everything was good and God designed everything, and why, why else would we question God? He's the one that created everything. And so in his very perfect design, God created male and female and for the purposes of multiplying, being fruitful and multiplying. And so that design by itself is from God. So to say that you know uh, that that we have you know this other sexual orientations or inclination i would say that the root of that is sin and we're going to look at that when we talk about the actual original sin but that in the beginning there was no confusion God was clear in making male and female. God was clear in his, uh, um, you know, in his declaration to them to be fruitful and multiply. I live for me, na faya ye le tani mal fine, or la ma fu anga, ya lishile ma fu anga, and lesa will fe upole losen mal, me ia fana fanau, ma ia uluola. Or if you know, I will tell you, 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 I will or wing a foe you to Elong, you wing a foe, a wing a yo to lie my ah, il a tough ceiling here, po out a tama, po or setane, po se fine, or wing a yo to lie my own o le lua yang a sala, wa faina tatu lang a sala, le le tatu tala noi, a me yellow tatu tata noi, temine, ole a matanga ya, na le le me a umana faya le tua, ole plan for ya ya malfa abaya le le tua, e le la se si la fe ceiling here for le plan a le tua, a wa tato na faya le tua, e pule. La la ya le tua i mea umai faia tato molona fina ngalo ma le la ya tato manino fo matato ba le plan la va le le tua o le tane o le fafine o le ale a nga i a fana fanau ma i a uluola e i tanga te popole ke ua overpopulate la lang ya le si me la tato popole la ngol folfolanga le folfolanga le tua la fo i si la fia le tua mea umai ya pa u le mea o le plan le le tua o le o le plan sa o le o le tua i le a matanga mantua le lo tato va i ke nesi lo nta 
kumuamua lele yo maike ni silo na mtao petolu tao maya ile mele na sala ilu wakita ngata le winga lai ii lava ye manino lava le hata na faya ele atua mea uma mlonga plan sa le lei fo i mea uma so what does you know does it mean to be created in his image in his likeness being created in God's image does not mean we are exactly like God Remember, and we talked about God being the one true God. God is a spirit. He doesn't have a human body like us. Ah, ah, tato tala no wa faya tato ile fa tu sa le tu e fo linga ile tu a ile fa pe o tato wa fai ma wa tu tu sa le tato ma le tu a no o le fa tu sa e e ya ya winga ma isi me la ikila va o le tu e fa tu sa tato a ile ma fai o na a vea tato wa tu sa le le ya ma le tu a no we're not be a langa wa tato malam na o le tu a yo le langa lava e le a ifo iso na tino pe o tato a ile na tato va va ifo iman tu a fo e tolu me e tato te lo a i l s s o le tu a ma 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 tu a u ma lava ma la la ni feme ya mo mo o le tu a ma mana o le tu a si la fia me a u ma o le tu a fo e ya i me a u ma upu e fa o ngai He's omnipotent. He's om. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. In other words, when we're talking about this, this distinguishes God. As human beings, we are not omniscient. We are not omnipresent. We are not omnipotent. Only God is. But when He created us in His image, we, ha you know, He's given us small things to reflect Him. In other words, we're small bits and pieces of who God is. But we are not entirely God. If that makes sense. You know, the illustration that was given, and I remember that it's like I don't know for some of you who have children and. Maybe Maybe they go to school and and they you know they're told to draw a picture of your family you know and I know some of you dads and moms you take that picture and you stick it on your refrigerator or you stick it at your cubicle at work and it's a cute little picture and most of you'd understand that picture it's you know stick figures right stick figures and you can see that the bigger stick figure usually is dad and they try to draw a shirt maybe in a short to show that he's dad and then mom is kind of like the shorter one from dad and then you, they use a triangle you know to to kind of you know show that she's wearing a dress. And then they have the two little ones, or depending on how many siblings they have, they're all the little stick figures. And so the idea here is, when we look at it, we can tell, you know, just by looking at it, that it's a reflection or an image of us. Even though we know that we don't look exactly like those stick figures, but we get the idea that what they're, that what she's trying to create here is an image of you, is an image of mom, is an image of their siblings. And so, in the same sense, we don't look exactly like God, obviously, because we all look different, right? But the, the sense of this image, the sense of this um, uh, likeness more so is in the character of God, in who he is and the gifts and the talents that God has given us. Those are the little things that God has given us so that at the end of the day, we are to reflect his glory. Ah, me ala le tato mala mala mai le fa ape wa wa ave wa fa ya le tu tato tu sa molo na fa tu sa pe fo linga fo ya te ya le fa ape tu tu sa tato mala tu le ai o tato o tanga tana fa ya le tu e sili sili la va le tu sili sili es la va le tu i me a u malava. So image means that we reflect something in the shape and the image of God. This also doesn't mean that we are little gods. You know, as some of us like to think, uh, Psalms 8 verse 5 is clear. For you have made him a little lower than the what? The angels. Who is he talking about? Human beings. So even us, we're made a little lower than the angels. But still, we have a, a uniqueness in why God has made us. But at the same time, we need to understand our place. You know, we need to understand who we are, that God is still in heaven. We are on earth, you know, and it's just uh, uh, it's just we need to know uh, our role, if you will. We need to know our purpose and we are never because remember this is why satan was cast out of heaven because instead of knowing his role and knowing his place he wanted to become god and so as believers we need to be careful that we know our role that we are people that were created by god we are made a little lower than angels and although we may resemble god in some way we are not equal to god but in the, again the image here just means a reflection and uh, uh um, just means little bits of gifts the character of god that's what has been given us because here's the thing whether you believe in God or not, all of us in our hearts, there is some form of of morality that's in our hearts and I'm talking about we all know what's good and what's wrong you don't need to be a Christian to know that killing somebody is wrong everybody whether you you believe it or not we have a conscience in us that will always tell us that something is wrong something is good so again that tells you that again when God made everything we were you know everything was perfect everything was good but again we need to make sure we understand that although we're made in the image of God we're not equal to God we are special and unique in his eyes but we are are not equal to God. Number two, 
we had a moral likeness to God. Now, again, we're talking about the beginning. Anytime we're, all of our points here is in the context of before the fall of man. So in the beginning, when God made Adam and Eve, they had a moral likeness to God. What does that mean? It means that when God made Adam and Eve, they were sinless and they were holy before God. So they were sinless, they were holy before God. But unfortunately, as we know the story, through to free will, uh, you know, Adam and Eve made some bad choices. And it is the result of those bad choices that sin was birthed into the world. And now, from that time till now, sin has affected everything, even us today. And so, you know, there's no reason for God to make us, uh, you know, uh, other than to just be robots and puppets. You know, just doing whatever. But the reason why God has granted us this free will is so that we can make that decision to choose God or to choose, unfortunately, the source of all evil, the devil. So free will is very much uh, a gift to us. But again, at the end of the day, it's, it's the same thing. Look, you either choose God or you don't. And the prayer is that in this moment of grace that we have, because we know that, you know, the story goes on later that, you know, uh, they, they, they disobey God, sin enters the world, and because of that, the rest of us are affected. And, you know, I, I know there are some of you argue, why should I be uh, affected to what Adam and Eve has done? And so next week we're going to look at that. But here's the thing. God has prepared a way for you. So instead of looking at the issue, all you got to do is look, God could have totally erased the world and started all over. But instead, in his grace and his love, he prepared a way for us to be made right, to be reconciled to him. And that is through Jesus Christ. And we're going to look at that more as we go in our study. But again, I want to just drive this point home that free will is a gift to you. It's a gift to you to make the right decision, though. Uh, because otherwise, if there was no free will, we would just be puppets. We'd just be robots, just roaming around, no real, you know, everything is controlled controlled by, by God. It would be pointless. We'd have no responsibility for our behaviors. We would have no true purpose. But with free will, God has given us that ability to make a decision to choose God or to choose, of course, Satan and the, the source of all evil. So once again, we need to understand that we have this moral likeness. So in the beginning, when God made Adam and Eve, they were sinless. They were holy before God. But we know when sin entered, that broke apart. They were no longer, you know, uh, sinless and holy before God. Instead, uh, you know, as we know the story, uh, you know, they, they disobeyed God. And as a result, sin came in. So the last thing I want to talk about here is we had the capacity for immortality or the ability to live forever. I'm still talking about the beginning. So in the beginning, before the very fall of man, Genesis chapter 1 and 2, when God made Adam and Eve, they already had eternal life. 
they already were they would already live forever with God you know and it's clear because when you look at Genesis 2 17 you know God said but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely what die now we know that when they ate it uh, they died the spiritual death they lost their eternity with God and so they have the eternal life you know the physical death we're all going to die physically someday and that's because of sin but here's the thing even though you know they, uh, they, their immortality was stripped here we still have the opportunity for eternal life through Jesus Christ. But again, with that free will, you need to make that choice, that decision to believe in God. So when we look at this, although sin brought death to humankind, the potential for eternal life is still in place. Because remember, there was still another tree. It was the tree of life and death that was there, right? This was the tree of knowledge and good and evil, but the tree of life and death was also present here. So having these two trees in the Garden of Eden, again, tells you that God didn't hold back. God released everything and God gave them the free will. God had gave them eternal life. God made them perfect. They were holy. They were sinless. Everything was good. But we know what happened. Adam and Eve were tempted and they couldn't help. That same lust for power, that same lust that the devil had to be higher than God, it was too enticing for Adam and Eve, and they had to touch that fruit. And so when we look at that, you know, I want to, you know, again, just encourage you that in the beginning, there was eternal life. They were already, you know, and you know, it's funny because when you think about how the devil tempted Adam and Eve, you know, he, or he told Eve, like, did God really say, you know, that, um, you cannot touch that fruit. And Eve was like, yeah, you know, once we touch it, we'll know this. And, and he says, no. And, and what does the devil says? He says, no, God knows that the moment you touch it, you will be like God. I mean, listen to that. Who does that sound like? I mean, it sounds like the source of all evil, the one who wanted to be like God. And here he uses the same temptation to tempt Eve. The moment that you touch the fruit, the reason why God doesn't want you to touch it is because once you eat it, you will be like God. Can I say that that's probably one of the biggest issues we have today, especially in humanity? Many people who want to be like God, but not be like God in a good way. Because here's the thing, what Adam and Eve forgets is that they were already like God because they had this capacity for immortality. They were already sinless. They were already made good. And when God made them, they were perfect. So they were already like God. But here... When Satan uses that you will be like God, it wasn't being like God in a good way. It was being like God in the sense that you can be better than God. You can be higher than God. You can be equal to God. But we know the story. No one is equal to God. No one will ever be better than God. God will always be God. Heaven and earth will pass away. All of us will pass away. But God, he's going to remain forever. That's why I love it. Because in the beginning, God, listen to that. That's the story of our creation. In the beginning, God. In other words, before everything else, God existed. God is above all things. God supersedes all of human life. He supersedes all of time. He's not limited to anything. That's why I say it's very hard to study God because he is an infinite God. And we just need to trust that, you know, like I said, when we look at this, in the beginning, God made everything perfect. God made the human beings perfect. Adam and Eve were perfect. They were holy. They were sinless. In the beginning, they had eternal life. They were already living an eternal life. But because they sinned against God, they lost that. But here's the thing. Even though they lost that, don't forget, God still made a way for us to be reconciled to him. To again, receive eternal life. What is that? Through his son, Jesus Christ. So yes, although Adam and Eve failed here, 
praise God that he's made a way for us. Fatile a tua, e ui lava inuanga, salaru wa itangata, ya ma ua hoti e fa alia nanga, a ua uma tua ele ma ua leto ye for ye la ule ule fa avau, a fa tile a tua, lewa tua saunia beta pena ele a tua se si ava noa, e ala le ya ye suke riso, e ma fayona mawa ye oe ma ule ole fa avau, pe a faita tote fa to a tua ya te ya. So e ui lava la nanga salaru itangata, ya ma wa faina e umata to, ya ma wa avese ina e foe le ole fa avau ya atama eva langa le ama tanga ia na iai, na maua e atama eva le amio tonu, na maua foe la ua le ole fa avau, a unu anga sala i le atua na avese ina e, a e faftai i le atua e le avese a avese loa pe o ti Apolo a, langa le ole to yese ava noa a ti Apolo i le lofa tu noa le atua, a o ta tou wa ia le o tu mai le ava noa. E ui lana nga sala a tamma eva ma ua faina e uma tatou a wana i ngalo. A ua sona vava ai e fo ima avala au so o le fea a e tatou vava ai ia 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 suke riso o ia lea ua saunia le ala e ma faina maua e o e mau le ola e fawawau. Ia man mea mul muli nei aso tantong tuspa ia e tatou o na atangia le ma malu o le atua i tatou o langa. As image bearers, our lives should reflect God. You know, as we're we're wrapping this up, because again, we're talking about the initial creation, why God made Adam and Eve, and how He made them perfect in His image, how He made them uh, sinless and holy, and everything was good, and that He also blessed them with eternal life. And then here, the number one reason why God has made us uh, uh, in His image is so that we can reflect who he is. In other words, we're not just here because some human beings have this idea that, oh, I can do whatever I want. I was born to do whatever I want. No. If we are truly believers of the word of God, especially many Christians who come to believe in God, we need to understand that God made us in his image. He made us for his glory, just like, like Satan in the beginning. Before he became Satan, he was an anointed cherubim. He was a, a holy angel that was created for the glory of God. But again, he made a choice. And his choice was to be prideful, to go above God. And we see the judgment that was pronounced on Satan. Can I just encourage that that same judgment can be pronounced on you if you don't get yourself together and understand that we were created by God, number one. Number two, we were created for his glory. We were created as image bearers so that our lives should reflect God. And doesn't it make sense? If we're created in his image, then it means that we must look like God. We must act like God. If God is a God of love, we must also reflect that love. That's why it's important when we talk about this, as we wrap this up, you know, that uh, it's, it, you know, in that verse that says, you know, if you love God, but you don't love your brothers and sisters, you are a liar. Why? Because how can you love someone you do not see, yet you cannot love someone that you see every day? This is that principle here. As image bearers, we are to reflect the love of God. In the same way that God loves us, we are to reflect that same love to one another. In the same way that God forgives all of us through the death of Jesus Christ, we must also have forgiveness for those who sin against us. In the same way that God has patience for us when we make mistakes, in the same way as image bearers, we must also have that same patience to, you know, uh, for others who may do us wrong. And so again, as image bearers of God, we must have that likeness, that character. We must reflect who God is. And the more effective we can do that, the more effective our witness is. Because like I said, you can witness all you want, but if your life does not reflect what God's glory looks like, well, all the things that you're preaching, then it's useless. And that's why here it's important that as we drive this last part, that we are image bearers. That yes, while we are unique in God's creation, but we need not forget that even though we're unique, we still have to represent him. That we are his Christ ambassadors. We are representative of who he is. Not just what he says, because many of us are good at telling people what we believe in. But here, as an image bearer, it should be reflected in our lives. Ah, it's a tau on a tangia le mamalo le tu. Alang a fai na fai ita tu le fa tu sa le tu a le winga la ita una ita tu a mio fa tu a o le tu a lo fa le lo fa ma ya ita tu a fai lo ita tu na fai le fa tu sa le tu a o le lo fa le le tu a ita una fa ti no fo ya ita tu ita una ita ni a le lo fa le tu a ya ita tu a wa o le a le ita tu va a wa tu ita tu a lo fa lo fa le tu a a ita tu le a lo lo fa ita ngata le ita tu va va a ya ya so umafamai tu spa ya o o le pepelo. 
aya et tau na fati no ina ole a lofale ole tu mo oi mau et tau na tania ita to holanga le ngata ile a fai em fai na fa mangalo ina ile tu ta to et tau fo yo ta to na fai lo na fatu sa o na fa mangalo atu ista ngata yang sala be anga le anga mai ita to a fai fo yo le tu e ono sai e yai le 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 um le le a e ono sai me o ma ta to te fai e fa pale pale e ta to mala mala ma fo e ta tau fo yai ta to le na fai le fatu sa le tu ona fa ali atu pe atania foi le ono sai le fa pale pale le no fo fe alo fani le va fe alo wa yo le tasi le tasi la ngol me na fe me yesu ye e alo fa tu le tu e lo loto a to e lo nga nga a to ma lo loto a to le fo fe me ya a wo fo ine nga lo ye lo fa tu le le tu tu your neighbor le tu tu a oi e pe on e alo fa lava oi ya te oi so again it why because we're image bearers because o tato le o faya il fa tu so le tua le ringa le tata o na tato wa mi o fa tasi ma le tua you know we need to be image bearers our our lives should reflect god you know we can say as much as we say but if it doesn't if it's not reflected in our lives then we're wasting our times but again as image bearers it's important other people should see a moral likeness to god's goodness and holiness in us le ringa tata o fa ai mai tsanga tsa so le e moni lava o tangata le tua o tangata na fai le fa tu so le tua so uh, it's not so much what we say but it's more so in how we live so our lives should reflect that so and that's what it was that's why when we talk about in the beginning before the fall of human adam and eve was a perfect reflection of god in all of his character and attributes they were holy they were sinless they had eternal life but as we're going to see in the next couple of wednesdays because of sin they lost all of that but here's the thing even though they lost all of that praise god for his love that he has prepared a way for us to regain all of those things eternal life to become perfect sinless before him because that's the ultimate goal at the end right now we're working out our salvation with fear and trembling but we're all working towards becoming perfect before god because when jesus comes back that's the church he's coming back to take a church that's blameless right a church that is pure and holy before him. And so that's why I encourage you to understand that in the beginning everything was good. When God made us, he made us with purpose. He made us unique. God made us for him and him alone. And so as we look at this, you know, uh this story, the purpose of it again is we want to begin from the beginning when everything was good. But in the next couple of weeks we're going to see that everything was flipped upside down by one decision. to one man to one disobedient to one bad choice sin was birth into the world and here we are today but again we're going to just build on that so we understand that the story doesn't end there the story continues there is good news in Jesus Christ but before we get there we're going to continue building the story here so that brings us to the end of our bible study today i hope that um uh this has uh, encouraged you or helped you in some way and again there's just never enough time to really you know study each part but the goal again is to just give you a little bit here and there so that you can on your own time continue to study and seek God and allow the holy spirit to expand this topic as you do your own bible study at home but i want to say thank you for tuning in today thank you for uh just again um uh, being with us in our live stream and we pray that God will bless you Uh, and everything that you have planned for this week get out there and enjoy the sunshine i know we have only a few more weeks of summer so uh get out there and enjoy the sun and I'm, like we encourage all the time to our church family uh please remember to continue to pray for one another and continue to uh be firmly rooted in his word and continue to trust god especially in this season of the church uh, otherwise we'll see you on sunday 10:30 in the morning our drive in service uh we're excited to see you all then but until then Uh, continue to keep the faith continue to hold on to to um, faith in God so may God bless you today for to ya tu leta to e kalesia ya me sela to umolo mai mo mai ni tu la la so ya o meta to fa umata to tu spaia ya fa mani ya tele le tua ta lo le tua ya nga fa ima so so ni foi ni le sa le fa le nga o lo ta to fa nga le vai ta ya fa malo si ai foi oi pe un tam fa tu tele te ni le la val tai e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e e
Yeah, I do the mail it on fire to touch on to spy out. Not only me, I saw Swania Twai, yeah, Umatuneo or to tie out, and to actually see a suit aima, my fight out ya, ya on our yachty oil and an upper ear, in fire of so Swania to yachty oil of sailing, ya taro le to ya on a name ya uma, multato sailing of Alemanga, ya, I'm late, me, I from a new tell ya to to a family to what to ya on a sane, and I was full, ya on tattoo driving service. Yeah, invite a friend. Ah, yeah, they say she if her away invite. Ah, to get this out. That's what I'm going to do. That's in my love. That's all. Yeah, but that's what I'm very very in my love. Two on the time. Yeah, they on the fire. We know. But that's what. So, Ninga. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord cause His face to shine upon you. May His grace and His peace be with you throughout all eternity. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. We love you guys.